Hmm. Life in Germany is not always easy. So if you have an easier alternative, it is my duty to bring it to you. Okay. Okay. everyone, welcome to the Phoebe Way. My name is Phoebe and on the Phoebe Way we talk about life in Germany, moving to Germany, settling within Germany, anything that makes your life in Germany easier. I'm your girl, I'm your plug. So if you have not yet subscribed, please do. Welcome back to my old subscribers. Hey, how are you all doing? Hope you're all doing well. Let's get into today's video. Today's video is about getting married in Denmark. You'd be like, hey, but you just said we do life in Germany. Why are we talking about Denmark? Hmm. Life in Germany is not always easy, so if you have an easier alternative, it is my duty to bring it to you. Okay, okay. So, you may have um, watched my things I do not like about Germany video, things I just can't deal with in Germany, and one of them is the long bureaucratic processes. I don't know why, I feel like they are just sometimes prolonged, I don't know why they do that, I don't know, but there is a way out. So if you are getting married, I mean, I know some people have actually gotten married in Germany and they were like, it took a long time. It took a lot. They would be like, prove this, bring this, bring that, this, this and that, okay? And that can actually be very stressful. But if you choose to get married in Denmark, the advantages are one, you don't have to produce so many documents, depending on your case, but usually it is, it's really like a, a role in the park. Two, it is fast. It's a, it's a matter of weeks. It doesn't even take months. It depends on when you get your appointment, but it is a matter of weeks. And even if it takes months, you know that, oh, it's just my appointment and then go get married. It doesn't take that long, really. Compared to Germany, it's like a second to what Germany does or to what the German local authorities normally do, okay? Three, you don't have to go with your own witnesses. Like, if you think of, if you want to save money, you don't have to pay for the transport or whatever for of your witness, just you and your partner, you go, you get married and you come back. And four, the, the one of the most important things is that the marriage like a certificate you get, the marriage certificate you get in Denmark is automatically valid in Germany. So you actually just take it there, you present it, it is then recorded that you are married. It doesn't have to be translated, it doesn't have to be authenticated, no, or legalized, no. It is valid as it is, okay? so. That is also a big plus. Basically, it's no hustle. Yes. And also number six, for people who love to travel, once you're in Denmark, you can just travel around Denmark and explore the country and see what goes on there, right? So that is, these are the advantages. Now let's talk about what you will need to go, okay? What you need for you to get that marriage license so you can have your marriage ceremony done. In order to get the marriage license, you need to apply for it. You choose the community you want to apply to. So um, it could be any city that is in Denmark. You can choose Copenhagen, you can choose Tonda. So if you are close to Germany or you are in Germany, the closest city is Tonda, right? So Tonda is the closest one. It is um, right next to um, Bremen, Kiel, Hamburg. You can, you can do that. Now you know where you're going and you want to apply. What do you need for the application? One of the things you would need for the application is your passport, of course. And you have to show that you have legally entered Denmark. So your visa, it could be Schengen, it could be whatever, but they would also check that. So that, this means that somebody who is an asylum seeker in Germany, for example, cannot travel out to Denmark because you're already obligated to or restricted to a district or to your camp. So when you have that, you cannot actually leave Germany to go to Denmark. And then you may have to make sure that your passport is valid. That's one thing. And if you are living abroad, so let's say you are Ghanaian but you live in Germany, you have to show that you actually have the staying permits for Germany, the legal staying permits for Germany, and you can actually live in Germany. So they will ask you for that as well. Good. So both of, that is for both partners. So if any, if this applies to any of you, this is what you have to prove. Now the next thing is that you have to prove your civil status that you are unmarried. Okay. So if you are a divorcee. You have to bring the divorce certificate. Are widowed? You have to bring the death certificate of your partner, of your deceased partner as well. And because of the civil status, because you ask yourself, where do I get the civil status from? It, you get it from where you reside. So if you are in Germany, that is what you. That's where you get the civil status from. You get this from the Erwerbsbescheinigung. They'll show you Ledigkeitsstand. And if you're married, divorced, or whatnot, it would be in there. Okay. 
good. Then if you are actually um, military personnel, you might need your commander's permission. Please look into that. And you also have to note that that certificate of um, civil status or your marital status, you have to know that it has to be um, current. It shouldn't be older than four months, okay? So it, would, it shouldn't be a problem because the Danish authorities are fast. So once you get it and you add it for your application, it should, it should be fine. But in Germany, you can have everything and then you have to still go ahead and do them again because the process is taking long, okay? So, yeah, that is one thing. So definitely consider going to Denmark to get married, all right? And one thing you should have handy, they don't always ask, but just have it handy is your original birth certificate, okay? Have your original birth certificate at hand. Now, it might be required of you to have all these documents I've mentioned, so the ladies kite, um, the marital status, the divorce certificate, or the death certificate, your, the date of, your birth certificate, they might need all of these to be authorized, legalized, um, to show that they're actually authentic. They might need it to be done with an apostle or something. Just do that in advance so that you save yourself time. And if your documents are not in English, German, or Danish, make sure that they are translated by an officiated translator, okay? Also keep that in mind. So if it is not in English, Danish, or German, please make sure that you have them translated, all right? To make the process easier for you as well. All right, so now you have these documents. Apply. You ask yourself, how am I doing this video now? I'm doing this video now because currently, yes, you cannot travel to Denmark because um, getting married in Denmark is considered wedding tourism and tourism is not a sufficient reason for you to enter the country because of the travel ban, because of the travel ban currently going on. But it is looking good that maybe by 5th of April, it would be lifted. So for you to just know that this is an option for me, I can start preparing myself. Yeah, yeah, it might it might actually be lifted soon. So if you, you're thinking of getting married in Denmark, this is your wake up call. Start preparing yourself, start getting your appointments ready so that once it is lifted, you can continue, all right? So you have applied, what happens next? What happens next is that you might be subjected to have an interview to establish that this union you're about to enter is not a sham marriage, okay? And lots of people have actually been getting married um, by paying someone to marry them so that they can have the legal stay in either EU country, in any EU country that they are in, that they live in. So because the authorities don't want that anymore, they want to make sure that your marriage is authentic, you are going in for the union of love and whatnot, they might interview you to establish the fact that it is not a sham marriage. And at this point, I also have to tell you that I just have to tell you so you know, be wary of that because at the end of the day, going into a marriage with somebody who is actually not your real husband or not your real wife, just for you to have the stay, comes with a lot of consequences that in the beginning you might not see. For example, just think of it. What if your sham marriage husband should die, okay, or your sham marriage wife should die, and because of that, all the widow benefits that should come to you, should come to the real wife, will then now come to you. Or if you allow your spouse to marry someone in this kind of sham marriage, what if you lose all your widow benefits? You might actually even need the money. But because you are not the legal wife or husband, you do not have any claims to that. So think about it if it's really worth it because you never know what might happen tomorrow. It is quite risky. It is quite risky. So let me just get that out there, the sham marriage thing. Now. You have applied, you have gotten the green light, you have the marriage license, and you can get married. You then go to Denmark, you show the document, and then the next day, you get married, okay? How does this marriage go? It is quite quick, 5 to 10 minutes. If you don't have the witness, as I've said earlier, they will provide witnesses for you. And then you, you get married, and then you get the certificate. You get two international certi marriage certificates, and they are in German, English, and Danish, of course. So you come back to Germany and then you present that to your local authorities and they register that you are married, okay? That is it. Now, that does not automatically mean that your partner can travel around, um, they can ex extend their stay and automatically you have to ask and inquire about what you can do, what you have to do. And I would advise that you do that prior to your marriage because then you can also plan the time properly. It doesn't just go automatic like that. The partner might have to learn the language, your partner might have to um, take some tests to show that they know what is going on in Germany and all of that. So don't take that for granted, guys. Do, do not. So 
please make your inquiries before you go ahead and get married okay so one of the questions might be what about changing of your names on the wedding day no you cannot do that in denmark you have to come back home to do it okay they just do the marriage ceremony they give you the certificates but when you come back to germany you do the name changing and all of that so guys i hope you have gotten an idea of what you can do don't forget keep checking online if getting married in denmark is possible if the travel ban has been lifted and i'll also be checking and i'll update you on the community tab so you know what is going on i'll definitely be updating the information there also on instagram and so follow me on instagram follow phoebe or the phoebe way i'll be putting the information in both areas so you know what is going on okay because I, I might not be doing a video for every update but i will put the updates on the community tab and on instagram and also the links as well okay so of the place you should go looking and i'll put the link for the um, travel ban thing also in the description box down below let me know what you think. Is this an option for you? Do you think this is really as easy as it is? Have you, did you get married in Germany? How was the process? Let me know all your all your thoughts and comments in this comment section down below. Have you done it before? And yes, if you feel like you do not want to go through the hustle yourself, there are actually agencies that do it. So check those out, out as well. Those agencies that actually um, facilitate the marriage process and the wedding and they, they'll check your document, tell you what you would need. You know they are actually like your middleman between you and the authorities so if you think it, you might need help they might be actually helpful for you as well good so subsequently i'll be discussing and updating you on the visa requirements or on the whole student's um situation coming to germany to study i'll be giving you all the updates especially with covid and how studying is going in germany so if you have any question on that please do feel free to send me an email or comment down below as well when it comes to students issue yes i'll be looking out i'll be looking out and looking forward to read your comments and answer them in the upcoming video guys and with that it comes to the end of today's video take good care of yourselves my people and i'll see you same time next sunday stay hopeful stay positive and this is nixon sontag cheers